This is Audible. Penguin Random House Audio presents Skin in the Game, Hidden Asymmetries in Everyday Life by Nassim Nicholas Taleb. Read for you by Joe Ackman. Two Men of Courage Ron Paul, a Roman among Greeks Ralph Nader, Greco-Phoenician Saint Book One Introduction This book, while standalone, is a continuation of the Inserto Collection, which is a combination of A. Practical Discussions, B. Philosophical Tales, and C. Scientific and Analytical Commentary on the Problems of Randomness and How to Live, Eat, Sleep, Argue, Fight, Befriend, Work, Have Fun, and Make Decisions Under Uncertainty. While accessible to a broad group of readers, don't be fooled. The Inserto is an essay, not a popularization of works done elsewhere in boring form, leaving aside the Inserto's technical companion. Skin in the Game is about four topics in one. A. Uncertainty and the reliability of knowledge, both practical and scientific, assuming there is a difference. Or, in less polite words, BS detection. B. Symmetry in human affairs, that is, fairness, justice, responsibility, and reciprocity. C. Information sharing in transactions. And D. Rationality in complex systems and in the real world. That these four cannot be disentangled is something that is obvious when one has skin in the game. To figure out why ethics, moral obligations, and skills cannot be easily separable in real life, consider the following. When you tell someone in a position of responsibility, say your bookkeeper, I trust you, do you mean that, one, you trust his ethics, he will not divert money to Panama, two, you trust his accounting precision, or three, both? The entire point of the book is that in the real world, it is hard to disentangle ethics on one hand from knowledge and competence on the other. It is not just that skin in the game is necessary for fairness, commercial efficiency, and risk management. Skin in the game is necessary to understand the world. First, it is BS identification and filtering. That is, the difference between theory and practice, cosmetic and true expertise, and academia, in the bad sense of the word, and the real world. To emit a Yogi Baraism, in academia, there is no difference between academia and the real world. In the real world, there is. Second, it is about the distortions of symmetry and reciprocity in life. If you have the rewards, you must also get some of the risks, not let others pay the price of your mistakes. If you inflict risk on others and they are harmed, you need to pay some price for it. Just as you should treat others in the way you'd like to be treated— you would like to share the responsibility for events without unfairness and iniquity. If you give an opinion and someone follows it, you are morally obligated to be yourself exposed to its consequences, in case you are giving economic views. Don't tell me what you think. Just tell me what's in your portfolio. Third, the book is about how much information one should practically share with others, what a used car salesman should or shouldn't tell you about the vehicle on which you are about to spend a large segment of your savings. Fourth, it is about rationality and the test of time. Rationality in the real world isn't about what makes sense to your New Yorker journalist or some psychologist using naive first-order models, but something vastly deeper and statistical linked to your own survival. Do not mistake skin in the game as defined here and used in this book for just an incentive problem, just having a share of the benefits, as it is commonly understood in finance. No, it is about symmetry, more like having a share of the harm, paying a penalty if something goes wrong. The very same idea ties together notions of incentives, used car buying, ethics, contract theory, learning, real life versus academia, Kantian imperative, municipal power, risk science, contact between intellectuals and reality, the accountability of bureaucrats, probabilistic social justice, option theory, upright behavior, BS vendors, theology. I stop for now. The Less Obvious Aspects of Skin in the Game 
A more correct, though more awkward, title of the book would have been The Less Obvious Aspects of Skin in the Game, Those Hidden Asymmetries and Their Consequences. For I just don't like reading books that inform me of the obvious. I like to be surprised. So as a skin-in-the-game style reciprocity, I will not drive the reader into a dull, college-lecture-type predictable journey, but rather into the type of adventure I'd like to have. Accordingly, the book is organized in the following manner. It doesn't take more than about sixty pages for the reader to get the importance, prevalence, and ubiquity of skin-in-the-game, that is, symmetry, in most of its aspects but never engage in detailed over-explanations of why something important is important. One debases a principle by endlessly justifying it. The non-dull route entails focusing on the second step, the surprising implications, those hidden asymmetries that do not immediately come to mind, as well as the less obvious consequences, some of which are quite uncomfortable and many unexpectedly helpful. Understanding the workings of skin in the game allows us to understand serious puzzles underlying the fine-grained matrix of reality. For instance, how is it that maximally intolerant minorities run the world and impose their taste on us? How does universalism destroy the very people it means to help? How is it that we have more slaves today than we did during Roman times? Why shouldn't surgeons look like surgeons? Why did Christian theology keep insisting on a human side for Jesus Christ that is necessarily distinct from the divine? How do historians confuse us by reporting on war, not peace? How is it that cheap signaling, without anything to risk, fails equally in economic and religious environments? How do candidates for political office with obvious character flaws seem more real than bureaucrats with impeccable credentials? Why do we worship Hannibal? How do companies go bust the minute they have professional managers interested in doing good? How is paganism more symmetrical across populations? How should foreign affairs be conducted? Why should you never give money to organized charities unless they operate in a highly distributive manner, what is called Uberized in modern lingo? Why do genes and languages spread differently? Why does the scale of communities matter? A community of fishermen turns from collaborative to adversarial once one moves the scale, that is, the number of people involved, a notch. Why does behavioral economics have nothing to do with the study of the behavior of individuals, and markets have little to do with the biases of participants? How is rationality survival and survival only? What is the foundational logic of risk-bearing? But. To this author, skin in the game is mostly about justice, honor, and sacrifice, things that are existential for humans. Skin in the game, applied as a rule, reduces the effects of the following divergences that grew with civilization. Those between action and cheap talk, talk, consequence and intention, practice and theory, honor and reputation, expertise and charlatanism, concrete and abstract, ethical and legal, genuine and cosmetic, merchant and bureaucrat, entrepreneur and chief executive, strength and display, love and gold digging, Coventry and Brussels, Omaha and Washington, D.C., human beings and economists, authors and editors, scholarship and academia, democracy and governance, science and scientism, politics and politicians, love and money, the spirit and the letter, Cato the Elder and Barack Obama, quality and advertising, commitment and signaling, and, centrally, collective and individual. Let us first connect a few dots of the items in the list above with two vignettes, just to give the flavor of how the idea transcends categories.